let's talk about the alibi. Before I get into it, I'm going to make two announcements. One, I might say some things in this episode that shock some of you. And two, I have a members only video going up later tonight, early tomorrow, that has to do with some information that was given to myself and a few other people while we sat on a panel last night on TikTok talking, talking about the alibi and talking about Idaho 4. And the person to give us this info was somebody who worked close with Steve G in, in the sort of a private investigator capacity. And they showed us a text that was sent to Steve that gave him an inkling as to how the police honed in on Koberger. So if you're a member, look for that later tonight, early tomorrow. If you're not a member, the link to subscribe is in the episode description. So at this point, we've heard the alibi. He was a runner and a hiker, and when school got busy, he started doing it a little bit more at night. Like, that was really the only time he could do it was what was implied, at least what I inferred. And he typically did it in the countryside, west of Moscow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that he has data on his phone in the form of pictures that corroborate that he used to drive, you know, at early, very early in the morning or very late at night uh, and look at the stars, and he would take pictures. Okay. What was interesting to me about this document was the corroboration. They said that they have an expert who can corroborate the claim that Koberger, Koberger's phone was west of Moscow at the time of the murders. So if that's true and he can prove that, he's innocent. Koberger's innocent. Full stop. But he would have to prove that it wasn't just his phone in that area. And if he can't prove that, um, I think we're back to square one. Because as I've talked about before, the intentionality of these documents and the wording, it's, it's all to create a narrative. And certain words are used to give a certain impression. You also have to remember People, these lawyers, they can't lie, outright lie in these documents. So I find it very telling that they make the distinction of his phone being west of Moscow at the time of the murders. If we're operating on the belief that Brian Koberger is guilty, and we go back to the timeline of when he left the house, when he turned the phone off, when he left King Road, Here's what we'll find. So, the, he's seen leaving the WSU campus around 2.42. He turned his cell, stops, stops receiving any, any uh, pings or pinging off any towers, I believe, at 2.46. And from 2.46 to about, what is it, 4.48, the, there's no pings. Now, He's seen, suspect vehicle one is seen on camera first entering the King Road residence area at 3.29 a.m. It's a 20-minute drive from Pullman to Moscow. So, if Koberger is guilty, why would it take him 50 minutes to get there? That's sub-question, <laughs> a little, little uh, like question A, uh, under the main question, why would it, he, if he left at 420 and got home at f around 530, why would it take him 70 minutes to get home if it's only 20 minutes away? I think, and I think Ann, Ann Taylor knows this, I think Koberger ditched his phone. I think he drove to a certain place. I think he placed his phone somewhere that he knew it was going to be safe. And then I think after the murders, he drove back to get it and maybe had a little trouble finding where he had placed it. And then when he got it, maybe wasn't sure how to get home and turned it on. I think he ditched the phone and that's why they don't say in the document. That's, that's why they're so specific with the wording in the document and say that the phone was west of Moscow and, and not Koberger himself. And the reason why I think he ditched the phone isn't just 
the, the time, you know, 50 minutes to get there, 70 minutes to get home, you know, if it's Brian Koberger. Um, but that 4chan post about mentions the phone. Oh, it's on YouTube, autoplay, no pings. Now, it probably wasn't on autoplay because it wasn't pinging anywhere, which means it was either off or in airplane mode. But it's the fact that that something was that could have been done with they mentioned specifically something was done with the phone to mislead. And so I'm wondering if in real life with what they real what the suspect really did was ditch the phone thirty minutes away or so so that they could say, Hey, no, as you my phone data will tell you I was thirty minutes away. Now he also says in this document that the that when they catch the the suspect vehicle one driving down a certain road that that's not his car. I think we now know why he used his own car and it's because it's such a commonly found car. And so he could say that could be anybody's car. You have no idea if that's my car or not. I'll also say that that 70 minute ride makes me wonder if if it's Koberger he drove to where he ditched his phone and that's where he cleaned up ditched the ditched the clothes and maybe ditched the knife like i've said I, I i think he kept the knife closer to him so that he could revisit you know the night in his mind whenever he wanted to but i think wherever this is wherever he put the phone is where i think he put the clothes and the knife at first i thought that it took him so long to get to and from, you know, if it's coworker. I, at first I thought it, it took him so long to get to and from because he was just trying to drive a route where he wouldn't be caught on cameras. But that's near impossible in this day and age. Something, if this is coburger, and it very well might be not. I mean, this thing with the phone, I think is a big deal. I don't think it's something that anybody should be dismissing because whether or not he ditched the phone, if the expert can say very convincingly that phone was, was in nowhere near that house. If he can say that convincingly, there's your reasonable doubt, right? So I think this is a big deal. But, let, you know, I always thought he drove to and from for, you know, had such long drives to and from because of the cameras. No, it's, I, th I think, and this goes part of, as part of the planning, I think he had a spot where he knew he was going to put the phone, where he probably stashed whatever he needed and got cleaned up there, got in the car and went home. Now I want to hear from you. What do you make of this expert and what he's saying about the phone being, being uh, west of Moscow? Do you think there's, there's something to it? Do you think he ditched the phone? Why do you think, if it's Brian Koberger and he left when he left and he arrived when he arrived, wh why do you think he took the route was so long or the time was so long? Be respectful. Say whatever you want. I just ask that you be respectful and leave it in the comments.